The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God our Father, we have come into this your house, gathered in your name to worship you. Keep from us all distracting and inappropriate thoughts, that our minds may stay attentive to what the Spirit is saying and seeking to do in our midst. May we lay before you all ourselves, and may we come to offer ourselves in true and laudable worship, that in all that we do, say, and hear, we may seek to glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. gather in the freedom of his presence. Today we welcome among us members of the Turks and Caicos Islands Customs Department who are celebrating World's Customs Day. This the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany and our liturgy continues on page 98 with the opening sentence. For the God who said, out of darkness light shall shine, has caused his light to shine in our hearts. The light which is the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name 
and in fellowship with one another, enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we confess in our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and to eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hidden. Bless the cause of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worship you in the world and in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. tranquility. Thank you for the many blessings in our lives. As we face these uncertain and trying times, grant us that peace in our hearts which surpasses all human understanding. Give us the strength to face each day, knowing that you are with us, and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. As we receive your peace, help us to work for peace, and to promote peace in the lives of others. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4 to 10. Now the, law, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant the word of the Lord. The appointed Psalms, Psalm 21, found on page 556, five, the Book of Common Prayer. Appointed Psalms. Psalm 71, found on page 556, five, the Book of Common Prayer, verses 1 to 7, we'll say it responsibly. 1 to 6. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it now is beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. reading from the second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 13. If I speak in the songs of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am nosy gong or a clankling cymbal. And if I am pathetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for thongs, as for thongs they will cease. As for knowledge, 
it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a minor, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I only in part, then I will fully, even as I have been fully known, and now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of this is love. This ends the reading of the word. has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath, in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. 
and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue was filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the gospel of Christ. chapter 13 verses 1 and 4 if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels if I have prophetic powers to understand all the mysteries all the knowledge and have all the faith so as to move mountains but if I do not have love I gain nothing in the name of God who is father son and Holy Spirit. Amen. If I am given the gift to speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, if I have the prophetic power to understand the mysteries of this universe, if I am given all the knowledge and all the faith so as to believe that I can move mountains, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. For the past two Sundays we heard about the part of 1 Corinthians where Paul speaks about spiritual gifts and how God has made each one of us different. Each with different gifts. When they are all put together they come together to fulfill God's purpose and God's plan. Paul also made the point, if we remember, that despite what we may assign gifts to be, all gifts are important in the body of Christ. If you remember, Paul used an analogy of the human body to help us to understand that each part, each role, serves an extremely important and necessary part. But then Paul goes to end if we were following last week, last week's reading, with what seems to be a rather contradictory sentence. 
Is there anybody here who believe they could remember what was the last sentence in last week's epistle reading? Or if I didn't know how to offer something and see if anybody would have, would have claimed it today. But having made the point that no great, no gift is greater than the other, Paul ends last week's reading by saying, but strive for the greater gifts. That's, that sounds confusing. But then what seems to be inconsistent by ending chapter 12 is merely a segue into chapter 13. Because Paul also had these words to say. I show you a more excellent way. And he opens up or gives us this to help us to understand that instead of fighting over the importance of gifts and being an important figure in the body of Christ, Paul says our focus ought to not be on those things, but the focus of the Christian life is to focus on loving one another. Have any of you, as a child, given a drum set for Christmas or at any point? Well, in my family, we have a fairly a one-year-old great-grandson, and my daughter was offering his mother a drum set that she said she ordered and it's on its way. She sent a message back, the minute that drum set reach, I send it back. Why do you think she would do that? Who looks a gift horse in the mouth? Why do you think she would want to do that? Somebody offer you a gift, a nice drum set, not one piece or two piece, but she said she don't want it. What are you saying? No, but no, you ain't hear the child play the drum set, yeah? <laughs> we can serve in very, various capacities in the church. We can give of our resources, our time, our talent, our treasure. But if it is not motivated or guided by love, Paul said it amounts to nothing more than clanging cymbals and noisy gongs. You all say, you all ain't want the drum set come to your turn. <laughs> it is a reminder that love must be at the, at the heart of the Christian community. And if you were to say what would be one of the prominent gifts of the Church of St. Monica. What, what do you think may come to mind? What would come to your mind? Mm, be bold and saying, eh? well, let me help you out. I ain't going to keep your world in your mind too much. But each time persons comment who would be listening to the services on social media, they say, boy, them people could sing. You all don't see yourself as that here. When you hear them people pipe up, some tones coming out. And there are no one, there's not one set of notes that you sing. We don't have all sopranos in here, eh? Huh? What do we have? We have some altos? We have some bass? Well, I know you got a priest who is spoiled. But despite all of it, when we put all those parts together, guess what we get? Beautiful music, a melody, a harmony. And it says that when it comes to being the church, to being members of the body of Christ, we do not all have to be the same. We don't all have to look the same. 
We don't have to dress the same. We don't even have to like the same things. But one thing is for certain, if we are to be called Christians and members of the body of Christ, we must all love. And that is what Jesus reminds us of in John chapter 13. That the world will know that you belong to me and you are my disciples. If you show love for one another. Unfortunately. Over the years we have developed another reputation in the body of Christ. Gossiping. Judging and fostering division or contention. This morning, Paul is reminding us that we need to address that. We need to seek to move beyond that and allow God's spirit to lead us to love as God has called us to love. It will not happen if we simply allow our emotions, our feelings, our egos, and certainly if we allow our flesh to continue to rule us. But the only way that the church will be the church that God has called us to be. Is when we give way to the power of love. Where this love will rule our hearts, it will rule our thoughts, it will rule our actions and even our speech. If we are to be the kind of people... The kind of church that God has called us to be a church that is unified, a church that will serve one another in love, where we will build up rather than tear down. A church where when people enter our space, they will have a sense of this love. We must rely on God's Holy Spirit. I know about you all, but I love me some mother's cooking. And I'm sure you love your mother's cooking as well. What makes the difference between mother's cooking and everybody else cooking? Huh? <laughs> huh? Her recipe ain't no different from nobody else, eh? Her combination ain't no different. But when she's stirring up what? And sprinkling the sprinkle is all driven by. That's what makes the difference. I can taste a pea soup right now as I'm talking about that. But let me move on. In the body of Christ, in the church of God, anything we do, anything we say, Anything we give needs to be motivated by love. Because despite what we do, despite what we give, despite what we are, without love, Paul said it amounts to nothing. I once had a friend who asked me a question. She was a little annoyed with her husband. Wasn't speaking with him, you know, give him the silent treatment. And she wanted my opinion, and I simply said, Whatever it is you are angry at him about, if he was to get in an accident right at this moment, or there was sudden sickness to fall upon him, whatever your differences are or your disagreement is, would it still be a big deal? Would it matter more than the health of your spouse? Basically, are you familiar with the group, the Shirelles? Anybody familiar with them? The question was, despite all, will you still love him tomorrow? The church of Corinth was making a big deal creating friction over things that were only temporary. And I asked the question among us, why do we 
in the body of Christ. Continue to allow this harmony and division among us over things that will one day pass away. As beautiful as this church is, one day this could come to an end. As beautiful as you look in the day, one day you will come to an end. And Paul says the reason why these gifts and all these other things will pass away is because they are only a piece of God's complete plan and picture. Any of you ever taken a steamy shower? When you go and try to look in the mirror, what you see? You can see an image? You can sort of see some silhouette. You can see somebody standing there. And one of you know is you because it's you standing in the front of the mirror. But as the fall goes away, what happens? You get to see clearer. And that is the illustration that Paul is using when he says, For now we see dimly as if we are looking in that foggy mirror. But there will come a time ahead where we will see more clearly. Where we will see God face to face. Now as innocent as I look, this nice hail over my head this morning, I used to get some licks as a child. And you know who licked me the most? The royal pickle. Huh? And back then I used to say, what could I get right? Because this woman just beat me left, right, and center. But as the song says in what farther along, we'll understand it better by and by. What was happening then, I couldn't see it, you know. But because what was done then helped me to become who I am now, I am now seeing more clearly. Paul admonishes us to strive for the greater gifts. He says a more excellent way. And then he goes on to state that all those other gifts, that those things that we prize, I could speak in tongues, boy, I could quote the Bible, he said, you know what? One day they will all end. But then he goes on to say there are three things that will continue to go on. Faith, hope, love. And then he even seems to suggest that even faith and hope one day will end. But guess which one he says will endure even beyond eternity? Love, my brothers and sisters, transcends even this world. You're familiar with transcripts, especially the high school ones. But I used to take those things rather lightly until I had to start preparing transcripts for students. In fact, I needed one too, and I went to school some years after leaving high school. And usually the transcripts, they focus on what we call senior high school. Most times it lasts three years. Do you realize whatever goes on those transcripts remain forever? So if you acted the fool in any of those three years, guess what your transcript would say 40 years later? You acted the fool. If you decided I could be cool and I could study and I could load up my report card with F's, guess what could be on your transcript 40 years later? I don't care how smart you become or sensible you come after. Those things on those transcripts go on forever. I guarantee if any of you all go to apply for college now and you only have your high school last education, they can send you back to the high school to get your transcript.
Paul says to the Corinthian church, put away childish ways. It is time to grow up. Because the things that you could have gotten away with as a child or in primary and junior school, they will now go with you into eternity. So our choices, our decisions, our actions, guess how far they go in with us. They will determine where we spend eternity. Somebody once said, makeup can only make somebody pretty on the outside, but can do absolutely nothing for the ugly that's on the inside. Does God's love have any influence in the service that you give to church and the service you give when you leave this place? Are these custom officers only looking decent in church? Or do they carry God's love with them when they go in to the workplace? And that's not only for them, you know, that's for all of us. Because sometimes some people don't even know we go to church. The way we behave in some of our work environments. There's a famous saying that goes, all good things must come to an end, <clears throat> not love. And you know why love will never come to an end? Because God is love. And Paul is saying that love will last longer than this world. And he says, how we love or fail to love according to God's standard will determine our eternity. As Christians, as the body of believers, we are being measured not by whatever status we achieved in life, not our biography, not our knowledge of church and the things around church. Not of what we call our church language, because we got some nice talk, we just talk in church. It is not measured by even our church affiliation. But we are always being measured by how we make God's love a part of everything that we do and everything that we are. And we acknowledge that the body of Christ is made up of a diverse set of gifts. It is made up of a diverse group of people. Yet in spite of our cultural differences, our differences in language, in origin, in worship styles, even our differences in nationalities. The world will recognize that we belong to God, that we are Christians by our love. Amen. Let us now turn to page 106 in our Book of Common Prayer as we make our profession of our Christian belief in the words of the, Knight of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The writer of 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 reminds that if we say we are without sin, it is ourselves that we deceive, and the truth of God's word is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and God is just, and he will forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all that is not right in his sight. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and to keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we've been all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. The peace of God be always with you.
Good morning, church. Good morning. We are so glad to see all of you here today. Whether you're here in the sanctuary with us or watching us on Facebook or YouTube, welcome. A special welcome is extended to the Collector of Customs and her team visiting with us here this morning. Ms. Williams will now come and bring brief remarks on their statement of occasion. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please bear with me, I forgot my glasses at home, my eyes aren't that well. Good, good morning again. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Father Douglas for allowing us to worship with you today, collectively, although I am a Anglican, um, to commemorate World Customs Day. January 25th marks the celebration of International Customs Day all, all across the world. It is an annual event that is meant to acknowledge and appreciate the role that customs officials and agencies play in ensuring the smooth flow of goods across the world's borders. The endeavor is to emphasize the working conditions and challenges that customs officers face in their jobs. The inception of International Customs Day dates back to 1958 when the Customs Corporation Council, CCC, formally announced the observance of International Customs Day on January 26 that year in an inaugural session held in Brussels, Belgium. The World Customs Organization is dedicating 2022 to scaling up customs digital transformation by enhancing a data culture and building a data ecosystem. Through this year's theme, we are encouraging the leverage, we are encouraging to let we are encouraged to leverage a digital transformation to take advantage of the power of data. Gathering, sharing, and analyzing data will empower us to apply innovation at our borders, contribute to evidence-based decisions, and foster an open data society. Customs TCI has made great strides towards a digital transformation with Asakuda World and JobQ. The department will continue to look for new ways to leverage technology to our advantage. Let us embrace a data culture for, the big, for a brighter future for the Customs TCI. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Please turn to your bulletins for the announcements. I will point out just a few. A reminder that the annual parish general meeting will be held this Friday at 6.30 here at the church. Drive-through testing continues here in the church parking lot this week on Thursdays, beginning at 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Let's Move Turks and Caicos is a program intended to promote holistic, healthy living alongside with proper nutrition. We are all encouraged to join the movement. The youth envelopes are available for all members under the age of 18. You can see Greg, myself, or any other advisor to collect one of these for your children after the service today. The Diocesan Youth Department 50th Anniversary Debate. Turks and Caicos will take the spotlight for the T-shirt day this year as we celebrate 50 years. We encourage all members 
to make sure that you already had your shirts purchased and that you are here and wearing them on that Sunday. We are still looking for suggestions for a topic for the debate. The deadline is the first, so please, if you have any suggestions, please send it to any of the advisors, or you can drop it in the church chat. We remember today in our prayers, those who are bereaved, the sick and the shut-in, our students studying abroad. Anyone celebrating a birthday or anniversary present here today, please come forward. Let's pray together for our brother and all others who are celebrating during the course of this week the birthday prayer. Watch over. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when they are sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace and passive all understanding. Abide with them on the anniversary of their birth, and all the days of their lives. To Jesus Christ our Lord. of the customs team to come forward for a blessing. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for these, your servants, who have responded to the call to serve you in this capacity. We continue to arrive for you to ask you to shower them with your grace and heavenly benediction. For we know it's not always an easy task, and it is only by your power and merit that they will be able to perform their duties in faithfulness, in justice, and also even to put a smile on them. May you help them in each of their acts of doing each day, to do it with integrity, remembering that it is the gift of you have placed in them to serve the people in this time and this season. We thank you for all that they do in this nation and all that they represent. But more importantly, may in each of one of them, there be the representation of the light of Christ shining ever more bright. Lord, now shower these your servants with your blessing, the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to be with them, their families, and all they love, this day and even forevermore.
26, we have the prayer for the offerings. One, two, six. Let us pray. Father, we offer you these gifts that you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves our lives and our We'll use the proper preface for Epiphany on page 127 and Eucharistic prayer form A on page 131. The Lord be with you. are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return, for it, to live in union with you, for it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and to make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, to redeem the world from the bondage of sin and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered a people to yourself to make known in every place this perfect offering which he made in the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. For on the night, he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is dead. Christ will come And so, Heavenly Father, rejoicing in His holy incarnation, His blessed passion, and His perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross his mighty resurrection from the dead, his glorious ascension into heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit, and be one body, one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us. Unite us with all bishops, all other ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God, both living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Monica and John the Baptist, our patrons, the holy apostles and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven in songs of everlasting praise. of God 
for the people of God.
words of the second post-communion prayer on page 148. 148. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we come of the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us leave this place of worship with a renewed sense of God's care. To love one another as God has loved us. For in loving, God is made known and Christ is revealed. When we love as God loves, this world will come closer to being God's promised kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us now go in peace to continue to love and to serve our God. Session hymn 300. We are grateful to have back in our midst our brother Burns, who was out for a short time. And we are always thankful for God's healing power and presence in our midst.
O Lord, may our experience in this act of worship so bring about transformation in our lives that we may reflect on, Lord, our time here and to search our hearts, O Lord, and see where we may be off from where you have called us to be. And now as we leave this place, fill us more and more with your love and grant us by your Spirit to fulfill what you command and to love what you love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.